Hey everyone, it's Galen again. Just wanted to show you a few things about the Lincoln Invertec B205 welder that we've been using to weld the thinner metals uh, like the cruiser frame and the cruiser gas tank. Um, a lot of people don't understand the difference between a, a large transformer style TIG welder and an inverter welder and I want to clear that up and also familiarize you with some of the features that the inverter welder has to offer. First off, an inverter welder is actually a, a rapid switching, um, smaller transformer style welder. It's very efficient and um, it's kind of the new industry standard. The inverter welder gives you a lot of options for changing the, the waveform, whether it's DC or AC. I'm not going to go over AC for welding aluminum right now, we're just going to stick to DC and how it applies to the, the cruiser frames welding that real thin tubing that we've been uh, doing a lot of lately. So, um, as I mentioned, here's the Lincoln, and I have it set on DC for doing steel. And right here is a chart of the uh, pulse graph, and each time you hit the setting button, it goes to a different parameter of what you can adjust. And this is basically setting a switched waveform, so no longer is it a constant DC voltage, it actually uh, switches. So your current is actually switched on and not all the way off, but very low. And um, you can tune how fast it switches per second. So for real thin chromoly or steel tubing like 060 or 065 wall, you would want around 250 hertz. So we switching and doing this cycle 250 times a second. And I have my on time. So this is one of the main main features is your current on time. It's set at uh, 65. So going over the settings real quick again, percent on time, 60 to 65%. If you go up to 70%, uh, your puddle actually gets uh, a little bit uh, more plastic feeling. Pulse frequency between 250 and 300. I like 300 and it ends up being a pretty, pretty smooth arc just because it's switching so fast and the puddle is highly agitated so it seems to stay pretty clean and lets you travel forward at a pretty pretty quick fill rate and it even lets you if you don't feel like pulsing the pedal or tend to weld without pulsing the pedal it lets you uh, dip and, and travel forward very nicely without keyholing your uh, your materials and then uh, again background current I have it set at 30 if you go down lower to around 25 Again, your weld becomes a little bit harder to travel, um, not quite as smooth, so I like to stay around 30. And the downslope, you can see I have the downslope time set to zero. Um, I usually roll off with the pedal. And finish current, usually just five, five to 10 amps, um, just so you have a clean finish there. And then post flow, kind of depends on your nozzle setup and how many amps you're using so basically the amount of heat you're putting into the metal I have it set at 9 because it's fairly thin metal so heat soaks really really fast and I have a pr pretty big cup um, so I like a real good good coverage smooth coverage at the end there to, to keep everything shielded until it cools off a bit 